Hi, Karen Hadler here from stampingbees.co.nz. Welcome back. Our second video global hop. Um, we are going to be covering spring flowers today. One of my favourite things, flowers. Even though it's actually autumn here, it is still lovely to be thinking about spring at any time of year. And also, I'd just like to say, I hope everyone is well and staying safe with the um, events happening around the world today. Um, we are thinking all of each other, reach out to your friends and family and make sure everyone is safe and has got everything they need. Um, it is just really hard for everyone I know. And um, yeah, we're thinking about everyone out there. So really take care and stay safe. And uh, let's get going. I'll flip you over and we'll get started. So yes, beautiful spring flowers. I decided to use a set that I have sadly neglected. I absolutely loved it when it first came out and used it. And as often happens with me, I then use it and move on to something else and it gets forgotten. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to be able to bring that set out. And this is the card um, that I have used to make a card about spring flowers. I just really think that the blossoms and, and uh, etc. on this represent new life and new beginnings with flowers and um, new growth. So let me run over the measurements etc. I have written them down here for you. Uh, I have used card base thick whisper white which is 14 and a half centimeters by 21 centimeters. The blushing bride at the back there, which I've embossed, and I'll run over those in a, in a moment, is 14 by 10 centimetres. This is shimmery white, which I do love for water colouring, and that is 8 by 12. Early espresso, I've used that to cut out the branch, the friend, and the strips. So it's just scrap, really, that you need. A strip of 12 by 2, and then some and scrap for the die cutting. Uh, Whisper White scrap also for stamping and cutting out the flowers and the Country Floral Embossing Folder. But these are the stamp sets that I have used. I will show you. So I have used a couple. I did want to put a little sort of a blossom on the card or sort of like new growth, which you can see is the... The little green that I've done there in pear pizzazz, which was fine, except I had to tape off a bit of the stamp to be able to use it. So I used this one here and just stamped off that, uh, which was a bit of a bit of a pain. So I did recently get this stamp set with my celebration um, in the new in the catalogue. I ordered this stamp set, Layered with Kindness. It has this gorgeous little, what I look upon as like a little new leaf or something like that. So I just thought I will give that a go on this card and see how it goes. And I have, but I have used the friend out of this Botanical Bliss stamp set. So the stamp set that I wanted to use to um, revisit was the Colourful Seasons. I thought very appropriate, seeing as we are talking about spring. But it has some beautiful uh, choices in here. And I've used the branch and the blossoms today from this stamp set. And of course, I've used the dies for the blossoms and the branch. I thought it was actually easier just to, because I'm going to watercolour the background, to die cut the branch and then glue that on. And this is the floral 3D embossing folder. Absolutely stunning. I do love this. And I also used from the lily pad dies, just this edging here to go at the base. Just to add a little bit of interest under there with the brown and then just a thin strip at the top. Okay, so let's get started. I'll just pop all those to one side. Oh, and I did um, pop, I just couldn't resist as that designer series paper is my all-time favorite. A little bee on the flower, very spring-like, I, spring I thought. And that was just cut out 
from this designer series paper, which is uh, in the first edition of the Celebration Catalog, which I'm sure everyone knows, they do have this tiny little bee. So I just cut that out to pop on my flower. So let me put all this to one side and we will get going. So first, firstly, so it has time to dry, um, though I have previously done one, obviously, just to save time. And I'm going to use my shimmery white piece of cardstock. I'm just going to give it a light spray of water and a light spray on the other side. This helps to flatten the card out, actually. If you give it a light spray on both sides, it's not going to curl up. Now, spraying it actually just allows you to move the ink around the paper. Um, shimmery white is fantastic. Not quite as good as proper waterproof paper, but it still works really, really well. And I, I wanted the shimmery effect on the card stock, so hence I went for the shimmery white. So just using your aqua pen, just always the same principle, always add a bit of water, start off light and increase the depth that you want. And there is no, no right or wrong way, if you know what I mean. You're just going to pop it on and spread it around. That's all you have to do. And you can add, so as I say, start off light and if you want to go darker, you can always come back in with a bit more colour. But obviously, if you come in too dark, you can't take that away. So then you can obviously go off and stamp your flowers, etc. while you wait for that to dry before we get on to the, the next phase. So all you have to do for the next part of things, and I have lost my bit of scrap paper, so I'm going to have to pause and... I can do it on here. I'm not going to actually cut that out, so um, I will show you. Uh, all I've done with these flowers is used Blushing Bride, stamped. I just ink up, hold it down for about three seconds. Stamp, and I've used, now I've used one, two, three, five of the big ones. And I have used three. That didn't come out very well, not very good on this paper. Plus, I probably need my need my little. Um, as you're all probably aware, the photopolymer stamps are fantastic, great for seeing what you're doing. They don't have the rubber backing like the red rubber stamps, though. So it's always a good idea to get a good crisp image to stamp on the bit of foam. That just gives that extra that they don't, the photopolymer stamps don't have with the, the rubber. As you can see with the red rubber, you have that little foam behind there. So this just makes up for that, basically. And then I just used Roco Rococo Rose. Isn't that just a stunning colour? And I have just, oops, doesn't want to stay on there. I have just used these gorgeous little middle flower stamens to stamp in the middle of my flower and I have also got the smaller one so you do all those and then you die cut them it does unfortunately take a little bit of time to die cut the the extra flowers not too long though, we're only doing five big ones and three little ones, so um, it's not too, it doesn't take too long at all. So what I then did, okay, so I have them all here, the beauty of the camera, I have pre-done them. I then, I haven't done these two, so I have just used my Compact Me tool. I have used the bigger, so on this insert, you've got a small ball and a big ball. I have just used the big ball, and I've just pressed into the rubber mat. This just gives a little bit of movement on those flowers. Just so that when you pop it on your card, 
they do look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so that's all of them there. And we can start putting some of this together. Okay, so this is still a little bit wet, but I have prepared something earlier, as I like to say. And we will start using this one. Pop that one to one side. So all I did was, as I said, I used the die for the branch and I cut that out. So I'll just grab a bit of glue. And try not to get too much. You don't want it to be oozing out the side when you pop it on. It's just a very, very small amount. So I'm just being careful as I pop it on. I'm not known to be the best for minimising my glue. Do like things to stick properly uh, so then just pop that on I think I did cut a little bit off the edge last time just so I could fit everything in properly okay so it does come over the, the bottom a little bit so that's fine because we will just cut that off Grab my scissors and trim that down. So I'll just give that a second to dry. And while we're doing that, we can then use this brown bit of scrap to do our sentiment. So I just wanted to write friend, sending a friend a card to um, wish them happy spring or thinking about them, especially at the moment with things as they are, sending a little card that you're thinking about your friend uh, is really appropriate and asking if you can do anything for them. Okay, so this is Versamark. And the first thing you need to do, actually I forgot to, to say, that's why I always put my Pad, my um, anti-static pad on top of my verse mark. I had already done it, that's why I um, got taken off guard there, but I always put it on top so I never forget. It really does make a huge difference if you don't use it. Okay, doesn't matter if you're straight or not because we're going to be cutting it out. And then I've used the sparkly white embossing powder. Oh, there's my scrap bit of paper there. Oh, well, didn't need it. <laughs> there we go, and shake off any excess. Then we are going to heat emboss that. So I'll leave that in there because I have done one earlier. So I quite like the, the style at the moment of cutting around the letters. It is sort of on trend and I think it actually looks quite cool. Am I allowed to still say that word cool? I might be a bit old. I don't know, but it looks pretty good anyway. And we will just cut that out, just following the pattern. There's nothing precise really, just, just giving it a trim around. Doesn't take very long. And then we have our friend ready to go. Okay, so what I did first, and I am hoping that it is going to work with this little this cute little, I think it's a blossom or a new leaf, something like that from that stamp set, but we are going to go with it. So I've just randomly put these on here. Um, just 
probably just a few. We're going to work around it anyway, so it doesn't, it's nothing, as I say, there's no preciseness about nature, so mind you, it always looks perfect. Okay. As I say, it doesn't really matter if it's not quite right because you're going to be covering this up with a lot of flowers, etc. They're only going to just be peeking through along the way. Put one there. Put one there. Go. I'll pop that to one side. <clears throat> now the next thing I did, I actually used this stamp from the Colourful Seasons just to add a bit of stamped blossoms and dots. As you can see, there's some dots as well around before I popped the um, die cut flowers just to give more depth in the pattern. So using the Blushing Bride, pop that to one side so that I don't get confused. Using the Blushing Bride, we will just ink that up. And I will. Now once again, it's just uh, just a guess. Not a guess, but you know what I mean. It's just randomly popped on, and we'll do one this way. And I've forgotten my little. After just telling you about using it. I haven't popped it on and we'll do one more and let's try and avoid the leaves if I can. There you go. So it doesn't look much at the moment as I say but we're just creating the, the depth in the card. Okay so with the blossoms. I actually, with the smaller ones, I've just glued them on. Once again, sort of creating that depth. I haven't glued it all the way over though. I might put that on there. As you can see, you do cover up some of these flowers. But that's fine. I'll cover up that on there a little bit so it works out well to be able to cover up any bits that didn't quite work out and pop that one there And one, two, three, and I think all my, oh no, I've got one more, one more, four of the little ones. I think I said three before, didn't I? There's actually four, four little ones. Put that one there. Okay, so the big ones I've popped on with the mini dimensionals. I can find my mini dimensionals, here they are. And once again, just as you're put, putting them on, just look and see if it looks reasonably balanced. So you don't want to put all the flowers down one end and it 
doesn't it looks as though the branch is going to break I love having all the different sizes of the dimensionals so as you're cutting all right and this one I will put here. That's one. Put that one up there. So as you can see, it, it's now added. You can't really see too much of one thing. Like if you've made a bit of a boo-boo with the stamping or something like that, you can't really tell at this point because it all just adds to that depth that you're creating with this branch okay so the next thing i am going to add is this strip at the top and put that to one side so this strip goes at the top i just wanted a little bit at the top to poke over the brown just to coordinate with the pattern at the bottom but obviously you don't need to use a whole card stock. You can save your card stock by just cutting a strip for that. There we go. Just hold it down because this card is a little bit bent from being watercolored. So the next thing we're going to do is pop on our little patterned piece at the bottom. So I think I measured it out. I just need a couple extra. So I wanted that to go all the way across. So I think it was just one more. One more that I needed, which was just one more off the, the die. So I'll just cut that and pop a little bit of glue. a bit close to the edge Probably better to have been a bit further away never mind uh, I'll just use that line to measure up and then put this one on as well Okay, perfect. Now the other thing I used, actually I might just need a little trim up there, a little poking up the side. Okay. The other thing I wanted to use was the uh, some twine, but I didn't want to use the twine. So this is out of the Country Club twine set. I didn't want to use the thick twine. I thought it would look a little bit too bulky. So I have, um, for the card, just split it. So all you have to do is grab how many pieces that you want, two, three, four, and you just, I hope this works now that I'm on camera, um, because I've already done it from here once. It might be a bit more, there you go. You just pull it down like that until you have separated it. And you just do it for as much as you want. And you can keep using that for, for other cards as well. So I'm just going to tape, put a little bit of tape on the back here. A bit further down, I think. This is the two-sided, double-sided, two-sided, double-sided tape. You can actually do it where you just pop the twine on the back and then put a bit of tape on. I actually, I have tried it that way, which works perfectly fine, but I find I like to do it this way only because I'm able to then 
pull it tighter um, when I'm putting it on. So now I'm not going to be able to get this off efficiently. Well, oh. So we will give that another go down here. And there we go. So this just saves use of your ribbon, etc., by not actually wrapping it right round. So I like to do it this way in the sense I can pull it across and then and then cut and get a nice firm strip. Okay, so I'll do the rest once it I have popped that on my card. So this is the the um, Blushing Bride cardstock that I have embossed. Isn't that just gorgeous with the rose? I just love this embossing folder. It is stunning. So that is just going to get glued on to my Thick Whisper White. And a bit of glue, not too close to the edge. Probably way too much for some people. Okay. I never like to think that my my projects are going to be lifting once someone has received it. So I am a little bit generous. So let me now just pop these on. Okay, so now we're going to pop that on. Nice and centered. We will add our sentiment and I will use small black dimensionals, which of course are still available to purchase through the holiday catalog or just online, but um, that's where they originally came from. Just love the black, black dimensionals. Oops. So more dimensional tape pulling off for you. This one's quick, just three. So I'm just going to pop that there. And rem using the remaining of my twine that I split. I'm just going to tie a bow. Well, that's not going to go in for me. These things always seem to happen when you've got someone watching you or you're doing it on video. It's all right. It's quite easy to, to tie this uh, twine. <laughs> she says, hoping that it does go easily. Okay. So that's determined to get into the, into the picture, that dimensional backing. So then just play around with it until you're happy as to where it is. And... Don't really want a huge one. As I say, I'm trying to keep this soft, so. Caught up. Hmm. Okay. Fine, so. The other thing I added just to Keep that soft look I thought would be perfect is a little bit of the very vanilla scalloped lace trim. Very vanilla. And I don't need much for this, I'm just going to tie a knot actually. And once 
again. Just play around with it till you're happy where it is, where it's sitting. And I'm going to have to go back after this and fix this because this has all got tangled. But I'm sure you don't need to uh, see that. I'm sure you can figure that one out. We'll just trim that down a little bit. And I have used these beautiful gems, which are the Champagne Rhinestone Basic Jewels in the mini catalogue. They are also gorgeous. And I've actually popped one in the centre of every big flower. So as I say, I've generously used them. And these are uh, self, oh, a good adhesive on the back, except this one doesn't want to leave me. So as I said, I've just put them on the big ones. Oh my goodness. Tap a bit of glue on my finger. Pop that one there like this. That might help. And then I have just done a couple on there. I do like my embellishments, I must admit. I've got to add a bit of bling. And one more. Okay. And on the inside and on the envelope, I always like to add a little bit of something. I've just done three of the flowers that we used and die cut and added the center as well. And actually, just before we finish, I have forgotten one very, very important step here to add my B. So I just used a black marker pen to give him some stripes. And I have just popped him on a little dimensional or her. Don't know why I tend to call bees boys. Just folded his wings up a little bit and popped him there. So you've got to have the little bee. Just perfect for springtime flowers. So please click on the next video blog hopper, video hopper. You will just absolutely love the videos and projects that everyone has made. Absolutely stunning. And you need to click on each one to see them and you will not be disappointed. Thank you so much for watching. I really look forward to seeing you again next time. Leave a comment, like or subscribe and I will enjoy reading them. Happy crafting. Take care. See you next time.